So how does Ektar, shot in a 120 film camera, compare with a basic Micro Four Thirds camera? Right, well it's fair to say that this video isn't all about a winner and a loser. I'm not trying to say that one of these particular technologies or the other is better. I'm predominantly a film user. I use an awful lot of film in all formats, 35mm through to large formats. And I do like to use my Bronica medium format system camera for probably the bulk of my shooting. It's probably the most versatile system I have. However, I also like to use lightweight cameras and this is a an example of that. This is a Micro Four Thirds camera. I'm also videoing this on a Micro Four Thirds camera. This is a humble G80 with a standard kit lens. And the reason I carry this alongside my digital, sorry, my film cameras at times is because of the flexibility it affords me. Now, I went out on a trip recently, uh, just the other week. And uh, just to let you know, this is before the latest lockdown restrictions. I don't know when the video goes out, but uh, I wasn't uh, prevented from going out. So I was making the most of the the late autumn colour. Now then, on this trip, I knew the weather was going to be, um, should we say, in, inclement. Uh, it's putting it pretty uh, politely. And I knew that when I went out on this day, I would be facing heavy rain. Well, we got there into the Lake District and there was an awful lot of water, as you can see. The, the rain had been chucking it down for the previous weeks and the river Brathe here was in full flood. It was absolutely torrential before we arrived, but fortunately it did ease off. Now, I knew it was gonna be a wet day, so I wanted a camera I could shoot with potentially all day, irrespective of weather. Now, my little Micro Four Thirds camera, the Panasonic G80, is weather sealed. Now, it's not weatherproof. It's not, it's not like it's uh, gonna be dropping it in a puddle anytime soon, but it will shrug off showers, especially if I put a little plastic bag over the thing. But I started shooting scenes and I thought to myself, Do you know what, I'm going to shoot them both with the Bronica and with the Micro Four Thirds camera. Now this is the first one, just shot across the river with a standard 80mm lens. Here we are, here's the Ektar shot, very lightly processed, very pleasant scene, very muted colours, a bit of a dull day really. Now this is the Micro Four Thirds image, uh, very similar, I think you'll agree. Um, there's not a lot in it really in terms of the, the, the colour, etc. It's all, it's all very, very pleasant. Another thing, I took my little uh, flexible brolly system. This is a different brolly clamp. I've got uh, a link to this in the description if you're interested. This just keeps the rain off my camera. Now, needless to say, if it's gonna be blowing a gale, absolutely chucking it down with rain and wind particularly, you will struggle because it will move the tripod around. Now, this next scene I shot with a polarizer. I actually shot nearly all the scenes you see today with a polarizer, really saturates the color. Uh, didn't take one well with Micro Four Thirds here, however, due to uh, me forgetting. But the colours again with Ektar, absolutely beautiful with that 120 film. I just don't think you can beat it in terms of realism. It's got a really good balance of saturation and, and sharpness. It's a lovely film to use. So I proceeded to work around the river for probably, ooh, probably about an hour and a half or so. And I came across this beautiful scene here with these, these leaves which are turned. And I had a, a range of colours from green right through to orange and yellow. Um, and again, shot with a 50, sorry, the 80 millimetre standard lens and the polarizer. These came out absolutely beautifully. I absolutely love the colours I've got here. Superb. It's one of those scenes where it's so simple, it's so basic, but really captures your eye if you close in. And the Micro Four Thirds shot, I think again, you'll see it's, it's remarkably similar. I got the same crop. I did tripod mount it here. so it's more uh, accurately framed. I'm very pleased with both of those. I then proceeded to head off and I was with my friend Robin for the day, shooting uh, around the, uh, the sort of, well, I'd say the Mid Lakes district really, but it was raining as you can see here, chucking it down. People were out, of course, braving the weather, making the most of it. And I had hoped to get more open shots. And just as I set my camera up for this one, it went dull and rained. So I chose instead another shot near uh, waterfalls, which are absolutely, again, in torrential flood, you can't really shoot the water, it just goes white. Now this time I had my 150mm lens on and what I like about this particular shot is I cropped in and I excluded uh, any obvious uh, sort of uh, reference points. So it becomes uh, a bit more of an abstract, but it, it's, it's one of those shots I like. It's sort of like going for that Elliot Porter look again. Um, it's just pure nature and pure colour. And it's just like a riot of colour and branches everywhere. And I think it's just come out beautifully on Ektar. I was really pleased with the colors here and the balance of the shot, even though it is a jumbled mess. 
But again, here's the one shot on digital, very, very similar, not really that much to, to choose between the two, if anything. I mean, you know, again, they're very similar. The compositions are the same, obviously. I worked away under the umbrella for a good hour or so, uh, looking around for shots again, but uh, couldn't really fault the conditions, even though it was raining, because it brought out the natural colour in the vegetation. Um, I used the, the um, I think it was the 80 mil here, or was it 150? I can't remember. I'm sorry if you can hear anything, it's just the rain bashing down on my V-Lux. Uh, camera gear did get a little bit wet. There's the little G80 in its plastic bag, its little holder. Um, totally safe. It did get damp on the day, but being micro four thirds, it shrugged it off because it's uh, partly, as I say, partly sealed. Uh, didn't take one with the micro four thirds here. Mm, forgot again, but I love the colors in that one. Now for the end of the day, we had probably had about half an hour's light left. We just headed up to a favorite spot overlooking the, the uh, Langdale Peaks. Uh, and again, as you can see, it rained. Now it didn't just rain here this time. This is the calm before the storm. It absolutely went berserk. The weather absolutely hammered it down. And I was hanging onto the brolly for dear life here, uh, trying to keep it off the bronic of the rain. I had to actually huddle over the camera at one point to protect it, stop it getting soaked and ruined. But it did clear. The weather did, uh, did well, I won't say it broke through, but it actually cleared just enough for me to get a scene through the, through the mist, through the low cloud, onto the far hills. And I absolutely love this one. I just love, I don't know, I just love the softness of it. Um, it's moody. Uh, it's the last light of the day. But again, here's the digital image. Very, very similar in comparison. The, you know, the colours are slightly different. My processing is slightly different, but really, you know, very similar. Well, I hope you found that interesting. It was one of those days. I absolutely, I absolutely loved it, to be honest, even though it was raining. I'd gone in anticipation of rain, so I dressed accordingly and it kept the water off me. I kept the water off my camera. Really did enjoy shooting with the Bronica. Now, it is fair to say that if you were, um, so we say, looking at these images side by side from both cameras and you weren't a photographer, you'd probably be hard pushed to choose and you would wonder why I chose one over the other. Apologies for the hailstones hitting my V-Lux now. Uh, yes, you'd hard push to choose one from the other. The film camera produces these lovely big six by six negatives, with plenty of detail in them. Now, the biggest problem I have is with the film camera. Now the film camera suffers from poor scanning in terms of my V700. I don't have a very good film scanner for medium format. I have a great one for 35 mil, a bit mediocre for medium format. So I'm throwing away some of the quality. Now that means that the Micro Four Thirds camera, the Humble G80 with its kit lens, even though it's cropped down to a one-to-one -one crop, which is only 12 megapixels, is sharper. There is more detail in there. But the film image does sharpen up nicely. It comes up uh, quite crisp if you give it a heavy sharpen. And the colors, again, are very, very similar. So on the face of it, you'd think, why would you shoot with a film camera? Why would you not just shoot with Micro Four Thirds? Well, there is more to it than that. There is a subtlety to the film look, which when, you actually delve deep into the image. It is, it is more to my liking. It's more soft, it's, it's, it's analog. It doesn't drop off so quick when you uh, apply excessive, um, shall we say, manipulations and maybe enlarge it beyond a certain size. But the film camera again, you know, is limited to 12 shots per roll. It's big and it's heavy. So again, you know, it's horses for courses. None of these are, are winners or losers. It just depends what you want to shoot with. I wouldn't take my time and set up as carefully shooting with the little G80 as I do with the Bronica. With the Bronica, I'm prepared to spend a lot of time setting it up. It makes me concentrate, makes me work a lot harder. I think some of the images came out well because I shot with film and the digital camera benefited from that time and effort. Bit trigger happy with digital, to be honest, and I would probably not even put it on a tripod, probably just do it handheld. Anyway, this leads on to uh, something which is probably worth talking about in another video, probably the next video, we'll do another video. And that is making the Micro Four Thirds images look like film, because I did actually process these digital images and I made them look as close to film as I could within the reason, you know, so give me five, 10 minutes in, in Lightroom. I'm not gonna go into incredible detail in Photoshop because I can't use Photoshop very well. Um, so yeah, next video, let's have a look at how we can make these humble Micro Four Thirds images resemble the film shots and have a closer look at the images, uh, zoomed in a bit, uh, look at the levels of sharpening and look at how we play about with those sliders and get a more, a more natural look, should we call it. So yeah, thanks for coming along and uh, putting it with me ramble on about uh, film and digital and uh, hope you enjoyed the trip to the Lake District and I'll see you on the next one.